What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for April 29th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. few housekeeping things before we get into today's episode. At some point tomorrow, I will be recording a draft recap as well as a Sixers Celtics preview. Also, on Monday, Comcast is going to be doing work in my area to upgrade things. Uh, they said potentially starting at 5 a.m., depending on the weather. Be without service all day. I have a hot spot I use for work. I just don't know if it has enough juice to actually record and do everything I need to do for the podcast. So there could be a delay potentially on Monday. Just wanted to give you a heads up uh, just in case you're an early riser and you like to listen on your way to work and there's nothing there for you to listen to. But speaking of the Sixers, Sixers update. There was supposed to be a big update about Joe's injury status for the beginning of that series on Monday, and there was no update. Basically, it's still too early to tell. Nobody's saying anything. I was listening to Hugh um, and Joe Giglio yesterday. Uh, I had to run some errands for work, so I was coming home and I was listening. And based on the injury, Hugh seems to think that, and again, this is all purely speculation, but he was saying that it it could be a matter of he has to get a specially fitted brace, like fit to his size, and that's sort of the holdup. If you remember when he broke his nose a couple years ago, they had to get the specially fitted mask, the, um, the black mask for him, and he actually missed a game, or there was a question about whether the mask was going to be done in time, and then there was only one. So I forget, it might have been P.J. Tucker, now that I think about it, but P.J. Tucker stepped on it or, or something. So it's same thing for the knee with this injury. It's going to be especially, or it probably is going to be especially fit at brace specifically for him. Uh, so they're probably rush ordering it, and they just don't know. Personally, I, I don't see them. there's any way he won't play. Um unless the Sixers are like, well, let's set you out game one and then give you the extra couple days rest for the thing. But Joe is going to want to play. So, again, no update. They said possibly tomorrow, possibly Monday. Uh, Well, the game's Monday, so they could go right up to game time. But Hugh Douglas seemed to think that it was could potentially just be waiting on that brace to, to come in. So we'll see. Good win for the Phils yesterday. They beat the Astros 3-1. to one. Nolan went eight innings, gave up three hits and one earned run, struck out six. Alvarado got the save. That is what you need out of Aaron Nola. That is the pitcher that needs to have that contract extension, not the guy that has started off the season. I want to see that now the rest of the time. And if we can get that out of him, we should be all right. Uh, positive news on Ranger Suarez and Tijuan Walker as well, uh, both progressing along uh, pretty well. It seemed like a Ranger did well or is feeling good after his uh, rehab start the other day. Uh, no major damage to Tawan Walker. So those are all good things. Schwarber hit a homer yesterday. Uh, Marsh and Pache each had RBI. So the, it's starting to kind of click now. They're above 500. They have a nice little winning streak going. Let's see what they can do this afternoon against the Astros as well. Eagles draft update. They did make some trades. Howie uh, maneuvered up somewhat. Uh, they had 65 and 66 back-to-back. They took a tackle out of Alabama, Tyler Steen. Uh, he's good because he's a, he was a uh, – uh, I forget what – I guess he would have been a senior because he graduated. He played at Vanderbilt, transferred to Alabama after graduation to get ready basically for the NFL. Plenty of SEC experience. Uh, he can play multiple positions. He could potentially start next year. Could be one of those guys for the future. Uh, but he has that SEC pedigree. And then at number 66, they drafted Sidney Brown, who's a safety from Illinois. And again, it's possible he could start next year. He's aggressive, uh, which is a good and bad thing. He can give up some big plays every now and then. But I think if you put him with some other pieces, he could be all right. He definitely is faster than Reed Blankenship, which is a positive. Uh, but again, you're getting into the the area of the draft where there's question marks. But potentially, both of these guys could not hit. Both of them could, one or the other. You just never know at this. Like third round is where it starts getting iffy. Like guys are gonna have bigger question marks associated with them. 
But overall, two solid picks. I mean, from two good conferences. Uh, they have addressed both. Both of them are needs that the Eagles have. So I'm anxious to see now what they do today. They have a sixth round and three seventh rounds. I'm totally expecting Howie to be wheeling and dealing some picks and moving back up. And just we'll see where, where things end up. But I don't think he's done yet. Uh, probably some more line depth, maybe a running back. You never know. I, I, I still feel there's something something up with a running back is going to happen. Uh, I just don't know what yet. Um, more Jonathan Gannon news. Apparently the Eagles are pissed about the whole situation now that it's all coming out. But this is also coming from Marcus Hayes, who doesn't necessarily always have the good, the best track record when it comes to breaking these things. Personally, I think where there's smoke, there's fire. I think just sort of the way the things happened yesterday in that press conference or the other day in the press conference, there's definitely some some smoke to that. And of course, I mean, it, it's Sirianni's boy. He's not going to throw him under the bus, but... I think there is something to again and being distracted specifically in that second half of that game. But we move on. It's day three of the draft. Nothing we can do about it. All right. Today we're going to go back to 2014. And on this day, April 29th, 2014, the Flyers beat the Rangers 5-2 to two in the first round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. This was game six. So they tied up the series and forced a game seven, which would happen the next night. Wayne Simmons in this game had a hat trick. Claude Giroux had a goal and two assists, and Steve Mason was fantastic, stopping 34 saves. And it was short-lived as the Flyers would lose a tough nail-biter game 7-2-1 up in Madison Square Garden the next night. Uh, and this was the, they've only made the playoffs three times since then, so this was sort of the end of whatever era you want to kind of consider that, where they went on like a nice little run of making the playoffs. It's all been downhill since then. Uh, the draft lottery is coming up soon, so hopefully help is on the way. Uh, but on this day, back in 2014, the Flyers beat the Rangers 5-2 to two behind Wayne Simmons' hat trick to force Game 7 of the first round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. All right, we're w- slowly winding down. We have two more guys left to spotlight. Today, Eagles draft pick spotlight is Byron Evans. The Phoenix native was a fourth-round pick, number 93 overall in 1987 out of Arizona. Uh, Obviously, he played middle linebacker. He was a Pac-10 defensive player of the year in 1986. Played all eight of his seasons in Philly. And he was, to me, one of those unsung heroes of those teams. He was just very... I mean, the guys thought of him as a leader, but I think he was one of those guys that kind of the glue that sort of held that linebacking core uh, because th- you have the the good pass rush, which kind of puts your, your linebackers in unique situations because of the defensive line being so good. But he was a very, very strong player. Uh, I would say borderline, maybe even underrated, just like we talked about Clyde Simmons the other day. Byron Evans was one of those guys. Everybody talks about Seth Joyner, but Byron Evans was just just as good. Um, Unfortunately for him, he suffered a career-ending injury in 1994 against the Browns. He broke his tibia as well as tore his MCL while tackling Leroy Horde. And also, unfortunately for him, he did not have a contract. He was going to sign a big free agent contract the next season, uh, but this ultimately ended his career. All in all, he played 113 games with the Eagles, 13 interceptions and a touchdown, 12 fumble recoveries and a touchdown. Still lives in the Phoenix area. Uh, He's the assistant pastor at his church, coaches at his high school alma mater, South Mountain High. But Beanie was one of my my favorites. And like I said, I feel as though he was very underrated part of those great Eagles defenses. Uh, because he wasn't the flashy guy, he wasn't the the superstar like Reggie, he wasn't the hard hitter like Andre Waters, he wasn't the playmaker that Seth Joyner was, but he just, I think he was like the glue that held that all together and very underrated. So Byron Evans, fourth round pick, number 93 overall, 1987 out of Arizona. On this day, the Flyers beat the Rangers 5-2 to to force Game 7 back in 2014. Anxious to see what Howie has going on today. Go Phils! 
More on the Sixers in the draft tomorrow. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Saturday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.